Yeah. So, you know, I appreciate that in the case of the Internal Markets Bill, it was the clarification by the Secretary of State in the House of Commons which tipped you over the edge from the argument that you deployed on the 15th of September to your resignation on the 16th of September. That, that was the case. It appeared to me that if the government, as a matter of policy, was not prepared to adhere to what I thought was a respectable argument, then they were prepared to proceed in a way that they thought was an intentional breach of international law, and I didn't regard that as acceptable. It's a question of how we, as a nation-state, perceive our obligations in international law. And as a matter of practice and precedent, we have always applied the constitutional principle that we will adhere to our international obligations. Others may not. I can give perhaps relatively trivial examples. Canada legalized cannabis, which on one view is contrary to some international charter obligations with regard to certain drugs and other substances. Uh, and nobody was particularly upset by that. On the other hand, if you have the Russian Federation entering Ukraine, they will tell you that they're adhering to international law in all they're doing because it's simply a, a preventive measure. Clauses 42 and 45. Um, I mean, did it occur to you then that this was actually the government really playing a sort of political game, trying to put pressure on Brussels to reinterpret the Irish protocol in a less rigid way, and that they were put in and they might be taken out, and perhaps you should wait and see until the outcome occurred in that respect. I, I certainly had the impression that there was such a, uh, a course of action in contemplation without any doubt whatsoever. I didn't think it was my role to see whether or not they were taken out. My own personal perception was that there was in the background uh, a belief amongst those who were going to negotiate in Brussels that if they waved the big stick saying we're willing to breach international law, we're willing to breach the treaty obligations we entered into just a short time ago when we signed the protocol, then that would be an effective negotiating tactic. Uh, I don't believe for one minute it would have been an effective negotiating tactic and I didn't consider that it was proper because as a matter of constitutional principle and propriety, we don't do that. You're really saying it was the potential of actually putting these proposals or clauses in the bill as intentions of government that uh, you, felt, you felt were most offensive, was it? I felt it was offensive that the government, as it expressed the position in the House of Commons, was saying it was going to breach international law. They wanted, as it were, to be black and white about it and say we are quite deliberately breaching international law. Uh, we are quite deliberately breaching the treaty obligations we entered into 12 months ago. And I didn't regard that as uh, consistent with the constitutional principle and propriety that we maintain. Okay.